welcome back to the channel guys pots and petals here i hope you're having a lovely day now i was up extra early this morning to get down to the car boot to get these beauties so i've got a few plots to fill um, and a couple of hanging baskets i found a couple down at the car boot so i'm going to have a go at putting them up and filling those with um some of the trailing fuchsias that i've got here million bells we've got another pretty little plant here that will trail and then at the back we've got our French marigolds. I've got some yellows, orange and then the mixed. And then along here we've got pelagoniums or geraniums. So I'm going to be getting these into pots today. Um, hanging up the, the hanging baskets. And I need to give the allotment a real good water. So let's get on with these bits today. <laughs> So this is where I'm thinking I'm going to put the hanging baskets. So we'll have one coming out this way. I don't want it hanging that way because it'll be on the path. So coming out towards us and then we'll pop another one just on that end there. I'm thinking I might I might actually put two on that end. But I do need to find a, another hanging basket because I've got the brackets for about five. So I just need to find a few more hanging baskets to fill. Let's put these up then. Thank you. managed to hash up hanging hanging basket brackets um, I managed to save this one this one's not too bad the drills and the screws I think they're a little bit too old and I started boring out the middle so I couldn't even take them out but I think that should be okay we'll soon find out if there's a storm and then the one down here is probably the worst one it's a little wobbly but I mean I don't think it's gonna fall off there so it's just gonna be a wait and see during the summer storms but let's try and do the hanging baskets now and see see if they hang all right so these are the two hanging baskets I've got today second hand now as you can see, one of them, the coir lining, isn't too bad at all, so we'll keep that one. However, this one, not quite so good, so I think that will go on the compost heap. But we're going to have a go at using an old t-shirt as a liner. So, I could have waited for Wilco's to open at 10 o'clock, but... I'm too impatient so I thought I'd use an old t-shirt and see if we can have the same desired effect so what I'm gonna do is just line the hanging basket with an old t-shirt like that so that will let the water out still but it's also going to contain all of that soil when we put that in there I might add this just as a sort of base layer down on the bottom, like that. And then we're just going to fill that up with some compost. Now I've got compost and perlite. Perlite because it's going to hold on to that moisture 
and I'm not going to be down here every day to water these hanging baskets so I need them to hold on to as much moisture as possible. You can get some gel pads which hold on to the liquid, the water, um, but we're going to give this a go. This is my first year of hanging baskets this year, so let's get these filled up with some compost. <laughs> So we've got those filled with the compost and the perlite and we're going to just plant these up with some trailing plants. So we've got uh, three trailing fuchsias and then we've got three types of million bells. So we've got a Harry Grey, which is a nice white one. And then we've got a Auntie Jinx, which has the fuchsia pink bells hanging down so I think I'm going to put two fuchsia and one million bells in one and then two million bells and a fuchsia and another in the other so let's get them planted up So we've got one hanging basket, which, you know, doesn't look too bad. But the makeshift t-shirt one, on the other hand, um, let's have a look. Okay, so the t-shirt was too porous and the water was just leaking through the bottom, so that didn't work. Note for next time. I should have really put the plastic underneath the t-shirt. But it was too late for that, it was already planted up. So what I've done is I've just gone in with a black bin liner and I've used some tent hooks down here just to stake it in. And then underneath I've just popped a couple of holes in. Now, from a distance I don't think it looks too bad. Um, but yeah, very makeshift. We'll have to improve on that next year guys, because that's a bit embarrassing. Right, so after that disaster, let's do something that I do know I'm good at, and get some bedding plants potted up into some terracotta plant pots that I've got. Now I'm just going to line the side of my poly house, just to add some more colour, and I'm using some drought tolerant plants. So in the past, when I haven't been down to water these, I do know that these do quite well. So I've got the pelagoniums or geraniums. And I've also got the French marigolds, which will go in the tomatoes as well. So let's get these potted up and see if we can get the area looking a little more vibrant and colorful. So I am using the same mix as before, <clears throat> so we've got vermiculo no, perlite and compost, so the perlite will just help retain some of that moisture, but also give it good drainage. Now in perlite, well perlite is a volcanic rock, and it allows water to pass through, but it also holds on to some of that water. So it should retain moisture a little longer, which is just what you want.
I am going to plant up quite tightly because I know they do quite well and they'll overflow over the top. So I'm going to put two in each in one of these. One in that corner. So there we go guys, they're all potted up, hopefully won't be too long before they're all bursting into life. I'm hoping that they'll just fill out these pots quite well and hang down the sides. And it's just going to create a bit of colour down my path. So I'm looking forward to this. Some of the smaller pots, like these ones, um, there's no bottom on these, so hopefully some water will collect in the outside pot for the roots to hold on to, because I won't be down here every day. Let me just come along here. Excuse the shadow. So yeah, that should just brighten up that little that little strip along there just across here so I'm now going to pop some of the more more of the French marigolds into the poly house so we've just lined the path with the French marigolds there is a reason why we put French marigolds with tomatoes um, one it's going to attract the pollinators into the poly house so they'll pollinate your flowers to provide you the fruit. They're a sacrificial crop for slugs uh, and snails. So they will probably, slugs and snails will probably go for these first rather than your other plants. 
but the roots are also known to kill off certain nematodes in the soil that might not be any good for your tomato plants. So that's why each year I do tend to go for the, the French marigolds. They're also quite strong, so the thought is that the odour will put off the pests that are after your tomatoes. So it's something that I was taught quite young and it's just something that I've carried on with. They are quite an old school plant, but I quite like them. They're cheerful. I just thought I'd have five minutes before I leave off. So I've managed to get all the bedding plants into their pots, get the hanging baskets up even if it was a bit of a disaster, and I've also managed to get some of the watering done. So I've gone round and just watered, watered all my pots and containers. So tomorrow I'll pop down, water all the beds, get a little bit of weeding done. But yeah, that's all we've got time for today. So I hope you've had a lovely day today. It's been another gorgeous day here in the UK. And I think tomorrow it's a little nippier, but not too bad. So enjoy the rest of the bank holiday weekend, and I'll catch you all again soon. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>